Welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, How Unique Cable and Connector Solutions Are Taking 3D Printing to New Levels, presented by Highland, TE Connectivity, and Tech Briefs Media. Highland Electronics is a global distributor of interconnect, electromechanical, and sensor products, and is authorized to sell TE Connectivity's full product portfolio. I'm Bruce Bennett, editor of Tech Briefs Media, and I'll be your moderator today. This webinar will last approximately 60 minutes, and there will be a question and answer period at the end of the presentation. If you have a question, you may submit it at any time during the presentation by using the Ask a Question box on your screen. Our speaker will answer as many questions as possible at the conclusion of the presentation. Those questions not addressed during the live event will be answered offline. You may also download a PDF of the presentation slides under the Event Resources tab on the left of your screen. To view the presentation properly, please disable any pop-up blockers you may have on your browser. At this time, I'd like to introduce today's speaker. Tyler Madden is Global Product Manager of TE Connectivity's Data and Devices Business Unit. He has been a product manager at TE Connectivity for 10 years. As a global product manager, he oversees the team of product managers who manage TE's smallest sized discrete wire-to-board, wire-to-wire, and flex-to-board interconnect systems. Now that you're familiar with our speaker's qualifications, let's begin today's presentation. Okay, thank you, Bruce. And I'd uh, just like to say thank you both to the Tech Briefs team uh, and to Highland Electronics for sponsoring the event here today. I um, look forward to having a successful event with you uh, and go through some of the details on how Highland NTE can enable some solutions within 3D printers and other similar devices for your design consideration. Um, just going back to our agenda to show uh, the detail that we'll go through here today, um, we'll start with a brief personal introduction. We'll dig into then some market interests related to 3D printing and introduce our teardown summary, as well as highlight some parallel designs that may be interesting to you or your companies as you're working on other solutions outside of the 3D printing area. We'll also do a brief product overview to level set on the products that we'll see within our presentation today. And then we'll get into the meat of the presentation, which will be the teardown review. And we'll highlight, in that review, we'll highlight key solutions uh, and considerations that you'll want to make uh, while you're considering your designs. And then finally, we'll close with a product deep dive uh, and a Q&A. So Bruce, uh, you know, again, thank you for the, the introduction. Um, again, my name is Tyler Madden, Product Manager at TE Connectivity. And as Bruce mentioned, I run our discrete wire and flex and board attached products uh, for TE. Uh, just from a personal, personal standpoint, uh, I'd like to introduce myself uh, from that side as well. I'm married, three daughters. Uh, it's not a typo. I have three daughters under the age of three. I'm also a huge baseball fan, uh, specifically a uh, fan of the Philadelphia Phillies. And then in my free time, I like to uh, play golf, go camping, uh, and go to the beach as well. So let's get started and explain exactly why we're here today and what we're going to be talking about. 3D market, 3D printer market and industry you know, is a very exciting and interesting place to be. Um, the technology for 3D printing and additive manufacturing uh, ha is decades old. However, the current state of affairs in this industry is quite uh, challenging and exciting. Um, it enables multiple things like rap rapid prototyping, quick turn designs, uh, and allows you to scale quite quickly in your industrial uh, consumer and hobbyist markets. Uh, basically, this industry enables a lot of things that were only dreams years ago, uh, and it's a really exciting place to be, and it's really uh, interesting perspective as far as uh, manufacturing and engineering uh, designs go. What we'll look at today is a teardown of a consumer desktop 3D printer, uh, and within this 3D printer, you'll notice a lot of different uh, connector components and designs. And what we'll do is go through each one of those and point out interesting solutions and how maybe you can translate these over to designs that you may be working on within your own industry as well. Um, some of the highlights in this area 
uh, are simplified construction. How do you make the most efficient design uh, for your end product? How you can move from power to the control to subsystems, and how you can control all these subsystems and sync them up together. And then finally, how do you interact with the user, uh, whether that's through a touch screen, switches, or other inputs, and then how you can also interact with the outside world uh, using Wi-Fi, uh, connectivity, and other considerations such as sensing uh, and the like. Before we get started, jump into the teardown. Uh, as I mentioned, we're also going to level set on some of the products that you'll see here uh, very prevalently through the teardown. Uh, this slide that you see on the screen is actually very busy, and it's intentionally designed that way. Uh, this is an uh, item that's going to be available for you to download through the webinar portal, uh, and you can have it as your own reference guide as you walk through. Uh, but basically, what this guide intends to do is to say, from a system design standpoint, what are you trying to achieve? And then it points you in the right direction as far as other products uh, that can help you achieve those designs. So in this case, we're looking at how do I connect different boards within my own system, and what are the mechanisms to do that. In the presentation today, uh, you'll see a lot of discrete wire interconnect, but there's other options as well, like flex, ribbon cable, FFC, and FPC. The guide then walks you one step farther into what product lines are available from both Highland and T connectivity uh, for these type of solutions. And then uh, using the hyperlinks that are embedded in that document, you can actually get to the part number, part number level detail uh, that you can use in your design reference. So getting started with the teardown, let's take a deeper look at the device that we'll be looking at here today. Uh, essentially, this, as I mentioned, is a 3D printer uh, desktop consumer version. Uh, and we broke this into five main categories for this device. The power supply, the main control board, the print head carriage, uh, the XYZ access control, and the print stage. Um, these are fi five uh, different and separate categories within uh, this device, and they're all controlled or used a little bit differently. Uh, what we'll do as we go through the next slides is we'll show uh, first some of the highlighted uh, components within this uh, within each of the five uh, areas. And then we'll also uh, show some solutions and other considerations that you may want to be made, uh, making while you're um, considering a similar design for your own product. So first, let's take a look at the power supply. Uh, here you can see three different areas that we've called out specifically. The first is the power input and the user on off. Um, this is how you're getting the power into the unit from the wall. Uh, this is plugged into your standard outlet uh, and comes in through a power filter, uh, which is attached using fast on quick disconnect. Um, and then likewise, your user input is simply on off in this case, uh, which is a toggle switch, also using fast on quick disconnect. Uh, and we'll talk about how you know, these, these uh, components were chosen uh, in the next screen. You can also see a power controller or regulator. Um, this is a pre-made uh, pre unit that's uh, supplied to the 3D printer manufacturer. Uh, and you can see here everything is attached to this power control regulator uh, using a terminal block and ring tongue uh, terminals on the cable. Uh, finally, here you can see uh, how we bring the power out of the power supply and into uh, the main unit, uh, which is using a free-hanging terminal block uh, which is interesting in the sense that it's very similar to the terminal block that's used in the power supply. It's a very robust design uh, and gives the user multiple advantages over other type of interconnect. You'll also see a little plus sign uh, right next to the component that's at the bottom of the table there. This is actually power coming back into the power supply from the control board to control the fan that's used for cooling of the power supply. So looking at some of the key considerations in this design, uh, this was actually a very, uh, very well thought through and a very efficient design on the part of this manufacturer uh, for multiple reasons. <clears throat> some of those, as we mentioned, are component reuse. There's actually eight different fast-on connectors uh, in this portion of their design, and that really helps with uh, you know, ease of operator use as they're assembling these within their factory, 
It really streamlines their processes, and we'll see that highlighted throughout the presentation. They also align the components that they use quite well with other supply components. So there's a on-off switch that has fast on tabs on the back, and they also found a filter, a power filter, that has the, the same exact quick disconnect on the back of it as well, so that they can use the same fast on connection uh, within the device. So aligning their supply components together uh, kind of takes you to that next step to enable the ease of the operator use. You can also see the use of unique custom solutions as well. There's a grounding clip um, that interfaces with the main body of the device. Uh, that's a customized solution. Uh, they had to work with their obvious industry engineers to design uh, you know, these type of uh, products. And this would be something that you, know, you could work with a Highland and a TE to create this custom unique solution that would be able to fit uh, the need for your product. Looking at the second portion here, we have the main control board or the brain of the unit. Uh, basically, you can see here quite a substantial amount of components on this uh, small board. And this, this small board controls the entire device. Um, so you can see first power coming into uh, this board from the power supply source that we just looked at. And then also power going out from this board as well to the various devices. And they make uh, very good use of component reuse here again. Uh, especially in these power supply uh, and power output connectors in the sense that they're using the same four position connector on the board, as you can see highlighted under number one, uh, but then split it out using multiple different uh, free hanging terminal blocks and they make them side by side to this connector on the board. Um, so very interesting use of the connectors, uh, very interesting use of the cable assemblies that go with it as well. They also use uh, the same connector over and over, which is interesting from a couple of different perspectives. One, it certainly simplifies the supply chain and the parts that they need to order, but it also can cause some confusion for the operator, and we'll go into that in a little bit in the next slide. Uh, but for, for what you can see here under number two, anything with that blue dot is actually the same connector or the same connector family in relation to uh, the supply components. And what you can see here, this is how they connect all of the different subsystems to the control board. In this area, they use 16 different connectors uh, and cable assemblies using different wire to board configurations. And then finally, as you can see highlighted on number three, again, multiple parts reused here. Uh, these are test and program unshrouded stick headers that are mounted onto this board. Uh, at various points during their manufacturing, they'll use these as test ports. Uh, to make sure that the items within the device are working properly. Some of the key considerations uh, that we can draw from looking at this uh, are, you know, when you see the picture of all these cables and connectors mated together, uh, you can quickly see how important it becomes to really make sure you identify and manage your cables properly, especially in the area of making sure that they're not mismated or cross-mated uh, in final assembly. Um, they do this in multiple different ways, and again, they actually do a pretty good job at managing all the different uh, connectors and cable assemblies that are here, uh, but some areas of improvement that we can point out as well. Um, from a cable management side, there's often opportunity to use different cable jackets uh, to help the operator identify uh, what connector needs to be plucked into what receptacle. You can use this using uh, different materials, different colors, um, and also identification and labels as well. Um, you can also change the physical layout of this printed circuit board to help the operator know the order of operation that they need to uh, make the connectors together, uh, which you could see pretty prevalently in the previous slide, uh, as well as helping airproof the final assembly. And there's some other things that you can do for airproofing as well, uh, such as polarization and keying, uh, all different options that could be considered in this area. And then finally, with so many different cables uh, being routed throughout the device in so many different ways, uh, basically one thing that you also want to consider is the strain that's put on these different cables um, and how they're going to be retained into the connector as the device moves. So to accomplish this, um, there's a lot of different retention and strain relief options uh, as well that could be applied to these cables and the connectors uh, to help ensure 
uh, proper mating and electrical continuity. Moving to the third section, which is the print head carriage. Again, great, uh, a great design and consideration as they move through this. Um, very much a simplified design, and they made the most efficient use of the space that they had. Uh, as you can imagine, this device sits on somebody's desk, you know, so every square inch counts. And you know, the way that they laid this out <coughs> really, you know, is a testament to their design capability. Uh, but there are again some features to point out and some considerations that can be made from this. But looking at the main components, the first uh, is how they bring the power and the signal from the main control board into the print head carriage. Um, they do this through the use of a mixed power and signal wire-to-wire -wire connector. Uh, this is really convenient for a, a number of different ways, um, but for the most prevalent is for field repair and testing. Uh, you can easily mate and unmate and access this connection point, uh, remove components and replace them you know, if you need to repair in the field. The second is there is a drive motor uh, for providing the filament into the print head uh, on this section. And this again uses a mixed power and signal wire to board connection to drive, uh, turn on, and turn off this motor. And finally, as you can imagine, there's definitely thermal consideration that needs to take place uh, in this area as well. Um, so there's actually a few fans on the print carriage. And these fans uh, use a very small micro miniature wire to board connector. Uh, which we'll see in the product offering as well as we get to the end. Some key considerations here in this area uh, are really around the thermal uh, thermal components, right? How do I measure, sense, and then correct the temperature in this particular area of the unit? Uh, you can do that in many different ways. They actually have a, a quite well-regulated thermostat in this area uh, that controls the fans and the, ultimately the temperature of the device as well as given you know, multiple points of feedback to the control board to control that. Um, you know, from a product perspective, uh, this can be done in multiple different ways, uh, but most prevalently would be using a temperature sensor in this area. Um, there's also the opportunity for other sensors as well, uh, particularly position. Right? It's very important to keep the position calibrated uh, as this print head carriage is moving across the device. And then finally, air bubble detection, which is big to detect any anomalies in the filament uh, as it moves into the print head as to not disrupt uh, your, your final print uh, is very important as well. Looking at the fourth area, our XYZ access control, uh, both the print carriage and the stage uh, are able to move in two or three directions. Uh, so this is really important as far as applying uh, the print to the stage and as far as building up the material throughout your print as well. Uh, this X, Y, and Z motion are controlled by multiple different motors, um, all working together as one. Uh, this is an interesting design as they have it all calibrated electrically uh, with no mechanical syncing up uh, whatsoever. Each one of the motors is controlled separately uh, and synced electronically by the main control board. Each connector, each uh, motor is also connected by using the same connect, uh, connection system for both power and signal. Uh, and you can see it's used four different times as far as wire to board configuration. Some key considerations that we can draw from this are the use of mechanical versus electrical calibration. Uh, as mentioned, they use electrical calibration in this area. Uh, but also, you may want to consider using a mechanical device, such as a belt or a separate drive, um, to overcome you know, some electrical considerations. Um, it's really up to you to decide you know, which is most important to you. Um, and there's trade-offs related to cost and reliability uh, in these areas, for sure. Um, there's also the importance of having redundant systems um, on both of the sides. Uh, the stage and the print head control, there is the ability to um, use a redundant system for the motors to control all three directions. Um, this, you know, of course, will give uh, some additional strength and reliability as far as you know, in-field failures that would not you know, impact the end device or the end item that you're trying to print. And then finally, uh, one other consideration would be when it's appropriate to use internal versus external style connectors. Um, so as you can see here, this is a very open box. 
Most of the electronic and connector components are exposed to the outside environment. They're exposed to the user. Um, they're exposed to the elements. So it's important to take into, into account, um, you know, it, would it be appropriate to use the same type of internal connectors in this external environment? What are the trade-offs? What are the risks from a safety perspective? And, you know, what's the reliability, you know, allowing my end user uh, to interface with these systems? And then finally, taking a look at the print stage, uh, you know, this is a very interesting design in that it has a heated print stage. And this is important for many different reasons within a 3D uh, printing field. Um, however, the challenge here is, uh, is quite vast, maintaining the temperature, uh, maintaining the life of the print stage in general. Uh, it also requires the use of a thermistor and the input of the controls uh, for that as well. And then also using different styles of connections on the same device and the considerations related to field repair uh, and replacement of these style of systems. So as you look at the key considerations for this, um, basically you need to decide on a couple of different things. Um, first and foremost, do I need to use a connector system at all or will I use a direct attach method? Um, so on the print stage here in particular, they use a direct attach method where the, the wire is soldered directly onto the stage and then they use a wire-to-wire -wire connection system to remove the entire stage. So if you would need to repair or replace the stage, essentially you'll be throwing the item away, uh, plugging in the brand new item, uh, and, and controlling it just like it was new. Whereas if you may have used a connector system, you could have saved some of the componentry related to the stage, the thermistor, uh, and the input controls related to that as well. There's also opportunity again in this area for sensing, uh, again related to both temperature uh, and position in relation to the print head. So now that we've taken a quick look into this device, uh, you know, let's dive a little bit deeper into the product offering uh, from TE and Highland Electronics that we saw uh, and, you know, point out some of the design considerations and how that relates to products that are available from our companies. Most, most prevalent, as we saw through this design, is, uh, as we saw through this device, is the use of small wire-to-board product families. Across TE, there's over 75 different unique wire-to-board and wire-to-wire -wire product families, uh, all produced to uh, serve different industries and different purposes. Uh, however, what we saw today is mostly what we'll call our fine-pitch discrete wire connector systems, and that's anything that's 2.5 millimeters and smaller. Uh, the marquee families from TE in this area are CT and Mini CT, HPI, Ant Slim, and Micro SLP. Uh, each one of them have different uh, reasons for existing and different, you know, advantages that they can provide to you and your design. Uh, CT and Mini CT are what we call our premier product family. Uh, they have the most robust design, the most product options. And it's the, definitely the lead-in product of choice uh, from CE as you consider discrete wire solutions. You can see the details listed out here, which we'll go through on the next few slides. In comparison, we also have HPI. Uh, this is our high-performance interconnect solution. Uh, this gives you a wide variety of choices from a center line, position count, and wire use option. Uh, it's also an industry standard design. Uh, so in many cases, it's drop-in replacement for many of our competitors' products. And it also offers unique design considerations as well, such as locking features and wire-to-wire -wire options. Now, Amp Slim and Micro SLP are our micro-miniature wire-to-board product families. And they both have a very low uh, mated height, uh, less than two millimeters, as we'll see in a few slides, and still offer the ability to bring in power, uh, low power into your board and into your design. Taking a look at CT, uh, this is our two millimeter wire to board product family. It's available in both crimp and IDC termination versions and can terminate 22 to 30 gauge wire in a two through 30 position range count. As you can see here, and as you'll be able to get from the reference material after this presentation, uh, you can see a product visual representation uh, that's available in our quick reference guide. This quickly points out all the different header configurations 
as well as cable configurations that you can purchase from TE and Highland Electronics. Some specific items to call out related to the design considerations that we saw through the device are a free hanging header. Uh, this is particularly interesting as far as field repair and testing goes. You can unmate a wire to board connection, use our free hanging header and a tester to manipulate and uh, evaluate any particular component uh, on the board or in the device. Another interesting connector component would be our panel mount header. Again, this would be a pass-through header, double-sided. Two female receptacle assemblies can plug into this. Uh, but as you move through panels and walls and different facades within your device, it may be interesting to use a panel mount header uh, as opposed to drilling a hole and pushing through uh, your wire, cable assembly, or harness at that point. Um, a lot of this is due to safety and stripping uh, of the wire in relation to the hole that the item will pass through. And finally, uh, as related to some of the considerations that we talked about for polarization and testing, uh, we both offer fully boxed headers and partially boxed headers or fully and unshrouded headers um, so that you can have different polarization options and to help with your operator's identification of which assembly should be plugged into which board side header. Switching over to Mini CT, this is a smaller version of the CT Connector family. It's a 1.5 millimeter centerline product, again available in both IDC and crimp. And this is used to terminate 24 to 28 gauge wire with a position range of 2 through 40 position. Again, you can find a visual representation of this in our quick reference guide and the material from the presentation today. And some interesting points uh, to point out here are both our panel mount product, again, just like in the CT, and our inverted through board product, which actually is something that we designed to help our customers solve unique challenges that they might have within their devices. Specifically, uh, this is a top surface mount product uh, that addresses the cable from the underside of the board. So your cable assembly actually plugs into the bottom side of the board through this connector. Um, however, it's surface mount to the top side of the board. So as you can imagine, uh, you could place this connector anywhere on your printed circuit board that you have room to make a cutout, and that would really shorten some cable runs that you might have to make or help you avoid going around the edge of a printed circuit board uh, where maybe there's not quite enough room to route your cable. Taking a look at our HPI solution, this is our last standard uh, size product offering. Uh, it's available from one millimeter to four millimeter centerline options, as you can see on the screen. Again, this is our industry standard uh, footprint compatible design. Uh, so if you're looking at one of our competitor's designs, uh, this will be very similar as far as the footprint and the mating interface related to that. Again, we also have uh, various options in this product line, such as locking, different color options, and wire-to-wire -wire configurations, as we mentioned previously. One interesting accessory product line that we have that goes with our CT and Mini-CT product family uh, is what we call a hybrid low-power drawer connector system. Uh, this connector system was designed as an accessory uh, to be plugged into a CT uh, or mini CT connector system, which turns a low robustness connector system into a very high robust uh, connector system. As you can see on the screen here, the housing is quite large. Uh, we also have thick gold plating and lubrication uh, on this housing as well, which can allow for upwards of 30,000 mating cycles uh, in, very, in very robust uh, operating environments. Uh, we have three different styles of this connector system. One is a signal only, which we call common termination drawer. Uh, one is a mixed power and signal, or what we call a hybrid power drawer connection system. And then finally, reusing those same standard power drawer contacts and removing the signal portion altogether, we have our standard power drawer connector systems. And finally, looking at our micro miniature or small discrete wire connections, uh, as we mentioned, we have micro SLP and AMP SLIM. Both of these have a mated height of 1.4 millimeters, uh, but you can see there's some differences through the features and benefits that are provided by both here. Uh, for micro SLP, 
This gives you the greatest length and depth savings uh, within the two product families and also allows you to terminate a very small wire at 32 gauge. Um, still being able to pass one amp uh, current rating through this connector system and it's only available in two position size as the intent is to save as much space as possible. For amp slim, if you need to increase the position size or increase the power that you can push through your connector system, you may want to consider this line. Uh, it's available in two through six position and it can push two amps per pin through this connection system as well. And as you can see here, it's designed to terminate 28 to 30 gauge wire. Switching gears a little bit, uh, we're going to also talk about some of our FPC connector systems and portfolio. Um, we did not see any FPC in the 3D printer teardown that we reviewed. However, one thing that's very prevalent in these designs and in other industries as well is the use of a display or a user interface uh, where an operator can interface with the device, whether it's on a 3D printer or any type of other machine. How you'll typically see this is through the use of a display. Nearly all displays are pro produced and provided with an FPC jumper, uh, and that needs to make some type of connection with their controlling subboard. These FPC jumpers are then attached using an FPC connector, uh, which is provided by TE Connectivity or Highland Electronics. The key design considerations that you need to make when choosing an FPC connector are going to be first and foremost the position size uh, and the center line size that you're going to use uh, for your device. Typically, the sweet spot, sweet size uh, for this type of connector system is in the 0.5 to 1 millimeter range. This gives you a good trade off balance between cost and size and performance. However, we do have a wide range of sizes and styles available ranging from 0.25 up to 1.25 to meet the different requirements that you might have. The second consideration is to make is on contact position. And really, this really relates to how your cable is routed and uh, sent through your device and how it ultimately arrives at the FPC connector. We have contact uh, positions available in both top, bottom, and dual styles. Uh, to accommodate however your cable assembly may arrive at the connector. And finally, some other design considerations for FPC are the trade-offs between durability and reliability and size and cost. These trade-offs are measured through the use of an actuator and the connector systems that use this actuator are typically referred to as ZIF or zero insertion force. Through the use of this actuator, you can get much higher durability and retention uh, and cable retention reliability. However, you trade off some of the size uh, and it's a little bit of a higher cost due to the more complex nature of the design. However, you're looking for really tight size uh, and really you know, tight control on your cost. You may want to consider a non-ZIF version or a low insertion force version uh, as your consideration as well. Uh, and this would be for friction fit style connection where the cable is plugged directly into the connector, no actuator, no moving parts, and easy for your operators to use. So with that being said, as we come to a close, I'd uh, first like to thank, uh, thank you again for your time and attention. Uh, but I would also like to encourage you uh, to consider some of the uh, performance related materials and also give you a call to action to contact your representative at either Highland Electronics or TE Connectivity uh, and tap into the resources that we have available for you. Uh, they're highlighted here on the screen, um, but essentially we're, both our companies are available to you for your design support and development uh, needs. We have experts in these fields that are more than happy uh, to help you through your designs and through your connector considerations. We also have products in stock available for immediate shipment uh, for your evaluation and use, and a full collateral suite available for training materials, product collateral, uh, sample boards for every product line that we reviewed here today. And finally, we're happy to provide full product matrices and competitive cross-references for the lines that we have reviewed. So with that, thank you again for your time and attention here today as we've gone through this material and I'd like to open it up for any questions.
Thank you, Tyler, for that most informative presentation. And before we begin, I'd like to remind the audience that if you have a question, you may submit it by using the Ask a Question box on your screen. Okay, first question. What is the typical maximum current rating for the TE connector families shown? Yeah, thanks, Bruce, and it's a good question. Um, typically, for the connector series that are shown, we'll have different current ratings uh, that are called out by the product specifications for those families. But the general rule of thumb is anything 2 millimeters or lower is going to have a current rating of about 5 amps or less per pin. And as you go down wire sizes, you'll also go down through current rating uh, availability and maximums. Um, so for some of the product families that we saw here today, CT and Mini CT have a max current rating value of 5 amps, uh, same as HPI. Uh, amp Slim can go up to 2 amps per circuit, and Micro SLP can handle up to 1 amp. Uh, but I would encourage you, uh, you know, as you look at specific connectors, uh, to take a look at the resources available for those product families, uh, specifically the quick reference guides and the product specifications associated with those parts. Oh, thank you, Tyler. Next question. Why would I use CT or mini CT compared to HPI? Yeah, another really good question. Um, as, we, as we stated through the presentation, CT and mini CT, uh, what we call our marquee family within TE, uh, this is because it provides many different benefits uh, over its counterparts, uh, specifically from a material and performance uh, perspective. Um, the material and uh, items are all UL and CSA approved and regulated, uh, as well as rated through different various uh, agencies uh, and approvals that are required for different industries. Um, so these can be from appliance to automotive, uh, industrial or consumer. Um, these all have different certificates and ratings um, that are already predetermined for your consideration. Um, also, from an HPI perspective, you may be interested in using this if you have a multi-source situation. Um, as I mentioned, this is an industry standard uh, footprint and design, so it's easily intermatable or interchangeable uh, with our product families as well. Thank you. Next question, what are the trade-offs between using discrete wire systems versus FPC systems? Okay, the trade-offs uh, between discrete wire and FPC are, are quite interesting. Um, discrete wire is generally a little bit larger and generally a little bit heavier uh, as, a pair, as compared to FPC systems. Um, so as you're looking at the full size and weight of the assembly, uh, you may want to consider FPC over discrete wire. Uh, that's a key consideration for you. So if you're manufacturing something that flies, maybe it's a drone uh, or a consumer-type device where you care uh, you know, very specifically about the weight, uh, you're definitely going to want to entertain looking at FPC uh, solutions. Uh, the trade-off there is the cable and, and the connectors can be a little bit more costly uh, than using a discrete wire counterpart. Uh, but again, if it's critical to your design, uh, you know that's the trade-off that you'll be making uh, between the two uh, various versions there. Thank you. I'm afraid that's all the time and questions we have at the moment. I'd like to thank Mr. Madden for giving us such an enlightening presentation, and I'd like to thank today's attendees for participating. That concludes today's webinar, sponsored by Highland Electronics, TE Connectivity, and Tech Briefs Media.